at Brighton Music Conference, where we've had the honour of chilling with the lovely Lisa Lashes, a pioneering female force to be reckoned with in dance music culture. Lisa's been flying the flag as both DJ and producer for the best part of 17 years, and uh, we thought we'd catch her before she goes off to give her talk here at the BMC. It's uh, about uh, the role of women in the electronic music industry, and it's called Journey to the Top for a Female DJ. And uh, we're also joined by Psytrance DJ and producer Cy Bindi, who's made a significant contribution to London's underground psychedelic trance scene. She also happens to be trained as a classical Indian vocalist, and Cy Bindi is, in fact, the woman behind a powerful new platform for female DJs, producers and artists, otherwise known as the Psy Sisters. So it's a great honour to have these two wonderful ladies here with us today. They surely do bring a whole new light to how women are evolving in today's electronic music industry. Thank you, ladies, for being here. Why do you think that there's been so few successful women um, in dance music culture? Is it maybe a phobia of technology or maybe a lack of confidence in a male-dominated uh, scene, perhaps? But, um, I think I think it is sort of like um, I think a lot of the producers I know I did like with the technology I started a bit later than the guys because it, you, you feel I don't, they kind of keep it a little bit of a secret <laughs> they're like, yeah. you're not allowed to know about this it was the first time I went on a pair of decks it was like um, I was only allowed to clean them at first I wasn't really? allowed to touch them it's oh. one of my friends boyfriends who brought the decks to my house to look after and um, I used to have to come home from Marks and Spencer's at my dinner hour and uh, have a play on them while no one was there or something until I was caught one day red handed so it was like and then I had to confess that <laughs> so uh, yeah it was it's just you know it's kind of wasn't a normal thing really seventeen years ago it was yeah. um, you know it was all guys really joining but why, the why guys do you think though why do you think that might be though why do you think that there's not been so many women is, do you think they're not confident enough or is it because of the technology thing and um, not so women are confident with technology maybe is I mean, I suppose they don't want to be embarrassed really, is it you don't ever want to be kind of embarrassed you want to know what what you're doing and stuff and um, for me there wasn't anything out there which was teaching you how to produce a track or play on the decks or whatever you'd only learn from who, who you'd see at a club or, or your friends really so um, I'm not really sure but you are, I definitely think you've got to be quite a strong woman to, uh, yeah. and to do what technology. we're going to do. I mean, yeah. technology plays such a massive part in it yeah. all doesn't it so yeah. I've had that little bit of a geek yeah. Yeah, the geek has got come out I a little think, bit. Yeah. Yeah. We don't look like geeks. No, 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 no. Quite if geek there is a geek in there. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see me yesterday around the conference. I go, what does this do? Oh, I'm <laughs> looking forward to having my geek right exactly. in the conference. I've done it, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you can tell us a little bit about your own um, personal journey. I mean, you've come a very long way. Um, it's very inspiring for a lot of women. And that's why it's fantastic to have you here today. And that we're doing this um, interview for Earth Dance Radio. I should have mentioned that we're doing this interview for Earth Dance Radio where it's going to be broadcast. Sorry, people. Um, and um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your own personal challenges uh, that you experienced en route to the top. Um, what was the biggest challenge that you faced um, as DJ? Uh, and uh, I suppose I still am facing it now, is to be um, uh, recognised as a musician and to earn my right on the stage as, as like all of the guys do. Well, I'll probably years. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to be um, uh, put in... To like a, not, not anything against the females, but what you know, a lot of the festivals and the things that I've done myself is there's a dedicated like pink room, which I think is really, really old fashioned. And uh, you know, why can't we just be um, amongst the guys playing on the main stage? It just feels as if it is a very boys club, especially now. That's what I think at the moment. Right. Like, yeah. What kind of challenges are there? Are you are you getting? Are you getting like not getting the the position on the lineups that you would prefer, or um, like? Just not. I mean, if you work, if you work out this year, I I've played um, for all the festivals before, and but yeah, I've not been booked once this year for any of the like the big festivals in the UK. And I just think, and I think it's really bad. Not I'm not all for myself, but um, it's like people that I that come to me on Facebook or to message me saying that they don't they were going to start getting into music production or going on a course at uni or. or um, being a musician, they said they don't see the point because the boys are not going to let me in. They don't see them letting me in, so they're not going to let uh, them in. And I think that's really, really bad because we could be losing a lot of females who are really, you know, hidden gems or whatever. You know. Do you not think you should dish, you know, do that for yourself? Because I'm doing a music production course at the moment. I'm doing it because I want to. I, I love music yeah. technology and I yeah. want to produce music. Yeah. 
well, that's what they should do. That's yeah, what I'm telling them. Definitely yeah. go for Just do it because it. you want to do it. Yeah. You know, forget yeah. everything else about it. If it's in your passion, it's what you want yeah. to achieve. Then, yeah. The music industry can be tough and competitive at the best of times. Um, do you feel artists could do more to help promote and support each other so that we can all achieve our goals? I am. I definitely think that. Um, I wish that's why I wish there was more females so that we could all support each other because like I see that with the guys doing that you know they'll do a remix to each other and sign to each other's labels and stuff but mm. you know we don't have the um, we don't, we haven't got that as much because I, I don't the percentage I like to work out the percentage of what female DJs are out there and you know we need more but you don't really definitely, definitely more. need more definitely more yeah and we do need to kind of stick together and help each other out because you know, the guys do. <laughs> oh, I can add yeah. to that. That with Size Sisters is, is, is one of the platforms that are out there right now that are helping women, encouraging women and providing support for them and giving them confidence to come out the closet and mm-hmm. do their thing. And it's been attracting quite a global uh, attention yeah. um, these days as well. So I guess these kinds of collectives will probably help as well. Yeah, we hope so. Yeah, There's definitely. a lot of new female artists just coming out of the woodwork because there's a platform for them to showcase their material and yeah. there's also a support network for them yeah. if they want advice on how to mix or just yeah. a bit of encouragement yeah. and that's Be- what we're doing with Size Sisters that, yeah. that's really good because it, it is like if there's somebody out there now um, how do they get their things across you know who do they send it to you uh, because a lot and I know a few labels that they don't want you to send the music to them they'll, they'll pick you it's like well how yeah. do you hear about me if I, you know, if yeah. I can't give you what that is yeah. you know, they sit so. there and go through Beatport maybe yeah. three days on Beatport going through every track that they that they see there or something perhaps. Yeah. Which is quite a laborious process. Yeah, I don't know, but it's you know, it's like how can you shine and do that and yeah. which is really good to have you your back in and using all your resources together collectively to well, it's, get the, it's all female artists yeah. helping each other. Remember. You know, that's it's the bottom line to it, you yeah. Know. Exactly. But you've been doing it for thir- you've been doing it for seventeen years. I mean like quite a long time in Hard House. Um, and uh, now it seems that you are <laughs> making a step into kind of psychedelic style <laughs> of music. Divulge. <laughs> Elaborate on that. Um, yes, I've kind of. Um, I came to a point, it was about two years ago when I was in, uh, playing in Bali, um, and I basically kind of had a horror moment standing behind the decks about to go and play and like looking in my CD wallet and going, there's not actually a track that I want, I don't know what to start with, I've just lost kind of the love for that music. That what, was in that, what was in that CD wallet by the way? Can't tell you, you can't tell it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was, um, it was sort of like the tra- trance, it was kind of trance, but um, it, it was going away, the trance is going away, which has got like the massive breakdowns and stuff, and I, I'm not, I don't know what to do in a breakdown, you know, it's all about So uh, I wanted something more chuggy and rolling and stuff, which is it. For me, it's like the side trance kind of style, and aggressive and a bit of techno thrown in there yeah. as well, so I'm enjoying it. Yeah. You've been re- Champa's been working with you as well, he's done yeah. a remix, has he? Yeah. He did a remix for me, so uh, that was really good. That went to um, number 11 well, in that was the nice. beat. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so that's, um, and that, I mean, that was with, um, you know, sort of our support network, but that wasn't with anybody really playing the track, putting it on uh, out, like, radio shows, podcasts or anything. It was just me and Champa and a few of the collective people playing it, like Christopher Lawrence's, because um, it was on Pharmacy. So it's just like, but for me, I, I think, well, if I had the backing of maybe a couple of the the guys, whatever, you know, playing that track, would it have gone to number one? I don't know. Obviously people like it, because it wouldn't be yeah, number yeah. 11 yeah. with no help at all. Well, yeah. so that's, that's already a great achievement, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's really exciting to welcome you into the side trance, yes. scene, by the way. Yes. Can you tell us more about your podcast, um, yeah. how do you go about devising them musically? I mean, you've got like 350 followers, I think, yeah. something like this. Yeah, yeah. Thousand, I think, yeah, something like this, yeah. Something like that, yeah. And then you've got, and then I obviously put it on my Mixcloud and Soundcloud, so then it gets another here or whatever downloads so uh, yeah it's doing quite well <laughs> so, <laughs> online presence yeah. with this yeah. so um, yeah I do it every month uh, end of the month and I try and do a guest mix of somebody who um, isn't like massive massive DJ but just somebody that I really like the tracks that they're playing now ask them to do a 30 minute mix and a, and um, sort of like they, they help me then promote my podcast through their kind of yeah. their, their, 
you know, when you've got somebody who's kind of like real, a bit younger, like really just new into the scene but produces some good stuff, then I want to give them a platform, whether it's a boy or girl, I don't care, you know, yeah. if they're playing good music and I'm playing their stuff, then you can do a you know, 30 minute mix and get your music out there. You're the only female DJ to make it into DJ Mag's top 10 DJ yeah. list, or is it top number one? nine? Number, number nine, nine. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. that's amazing! Congratulations! <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So Great, good. yeah. I mean, <laughs> the only one, one to make it into the top yeah. 10. I mean, yeah. that's that's quite that's quite something, isn't it? It's quite incredible that you're the only one that's made it into the top 10 of DJ. I keep yeah. repeating that, don't I? Yeah. I keep repeating <laughs> DJ that top because it is, a, <laughs> it is it's, it's massive. It's a point that needs to be emphasized, yeah, yeah, I think, yes. and there's there should be more. Well, it's. I mean, I. How come I, you're the only one? I don't. I think this is the thing. I have no idea. Why is there only really like three or four in? Um, like last year's top 100 and the year before that was only like four or five and yeah. it's just going down and down and down and yeah. so we're going to have the top 100 DJs just going to be made so I'm not happy about that yeah, at least you know if I continue pioneering exactly here, so, that's yeah. what I if I can see something down the line it would be getting you know getting the um, females in the top 100 yeah I, I, I discovered this myself like last year I wrote an article for um, a magazine called Mushroom uh, on Women's Day in fact and it was called um well, it was about female energy rising in the dance music culture scene. And I looked at the figures of DJ Magazine over the previous years, and I and I saw from my own eyes that there was hardly any women in the top 100. No, there isn't. Uh, let alone the top 10. Um, exactly. I mean, but what do you feel though? Do you, what are your thoughts on the future for women in dance music industry? You know, you know are things changing for the better? I mean, do you think platforms like Size Sisters, for example, can, help to transform things well, for think, women in the scene? I think so because it's collectively all helping each other um, using your resources from like the Facebook or online sort of um, uh, portals to all help each other really isn't it getting, mm. getting it out there and that's what you need. It's hard work and you know dedication and stuff but um, you've got to do it if you love it. Yeah, so, yeah definitely if you, if you think you've got it in you and you're willing to work hard then go for it. And of course, we look forward to welcoming you to Sci Sisters. Yeah, yeah fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. It's been a pleasure to, to chat to you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>